All right, y'all. So today we have to go look at a. What are we gonna look at? Oh, today we have to go look at a location that I'll be filming part three of that music film series that I've done, which is Backseat and Wasp. You can check that out. I still haven't got it right yet, but you check that out in one of these little corners here. Secondly, as you can see, we are shooting more of a wide angle lens. I own the Sam Yang 18mm f2.8. That's the lens we'll be using for our vlogs now. But today's video is gonna be about why I prefer or why I choose, we have to say Sony cameras, over Black Pocket Magic cameras. Black Pocket, Black Magic cameras. We can call them that for the rest of this video. I choose Sony cameras over Black Magic cameras because one, they're straight at the gate, because my production needs better. But we get more into that. Gotta go pick up my wife. So. So, number one, I buy Sony cameras over Black Magic cameras because they fit my production over a few reasons. We're gonna discuss those now. Number one, I think it kind of goes without saying it's gonna be the autofocus. Like for what I do with me being a one man band, uh, for most of my productions, if, I ain't, if it's not me, you know, I got my boy Sean Miles, but hell, even he has an A7S3. So autofocus is needed in what I do. Now granted, I was able to make shit work with the GH5, which you know, um, <laughs> but overall for what I'm doing now, for the creative shots that I do, for the, like, I need autofocus as relies with, as, I, as if I have a, someone like pulling focus for me. And with the A7S III, it gives me that. With the Black Pocket, with the Black Magic cameras, you pretty much, you know, you're not using autofocus. Let's be real. If you own a Black Magic camera, you're just not using autofocus. So nine times out of 10, you have somebody who is, you know what I'm saying, pulling focus for you, which in that in that regard, you have a bigger budget and you also have, you know what I'm saying, you got somebody who's, who's great at what they do because you got to make sure that you pay them well. So to me, that actually ups the cost from using this camera unless, you know, if you're that brave with it and you trust it and you, you know what I'm saying, you're able to manual focus it, then cool, but in, in, in my opinion, you're not gonna be able to get the certain shots that I can get as if I had an A7S III. So like, you probably can, but tracking shots gonna be a lot more difficult for you, damn near virtually impossible, especially if you're shooting at a shallow depth of field. So if you're shooting at anything on a lens like a 1.8 and you're trying to manually focus that and try to do like a push-in shot or some shit, like, who? For real? Versus if you had an A7S III, you shoot on an F1.8 and you push it in, the eye tracking is so good, it's, it's almost like you have a artificial intelligence just you know pulling focus for you. So for me, autofocus is a big reason why I couldn't use something like a black magic camera. Not saying that it can't be done, just for me, I'm just not doing it. Alright, so listen, um, random. Uh, Galant and NF. I don't know if you've ever heard of those two artists, but they are amazing. Check out their albums. But anyway, now with the autofocus thing, right? I'm not gonna sit there and just make this like a, a black magic camera, you know what I'm saying, uh, hate party. No, to me, something that can combat something like the use of autofocus, I would say we could talk about the 6K Pro, since we're talking about the A7S III, we could talk about the built-in variable ND, the uh, electronic ND they got in there. So like, to me, that's a game changer, yo. Like, that is a game changer. Yes, Sony's autofocus is a game changer as well, but man, you know, if you are an indie filmmaker, you know what I'm saying? Again, that's why I say it heavily, and right in the beginning of the video, it depends on your production, because if you are an indie filmmaker where autofocus is just not something that concerns you, having a camera with a built-in variable ND, yo, like, come on, fam. That's just, come on, fam. One thing I love about having a wide angle lens, you get to see so much more shit. Oh man, looks good, man. Uh, but we have made it to, I had to park my car, but we made it to uh parking garage as close to the building that we'll be filming part three. <laughs> wow, look at this view, yo. Like, oh my god, dude. Oh my god. I just love I just really love this space in general. Listen. Okay. 
awesome. Yo. Got a sound system in here too. Yeah, the, karaoke. No shit. Dude, the acoustics in here are just oh my god, nothing. Professional. <laughs> oh. The stripper. Okay. Now I want to apologize for how long that actually took, right? But I'm I'm so happy I got to see just a glimpse. <sighs> yes, I have no idea. So anyway, moving on to why I still choose Sony like A7S3 over 6K Pro, which is gonna be usability. Now to be real, if you take the A7S3 straight out of the box, you like you ready to go. Like there's nothing else other than a lens that you need and. You know what I'm saying? Depending on your budget and what type of photographer or videographer you are, sorry, filmmaker, um, then you can go ahead and get you a lens like I did for 225 bucks, start rocking out, start making content, you're good to go. Now, can you do this on the 6K Pro? No. Now, obviously, if you are that type of creative, then you should be looking at a 6K Pro either way. But again, if we're talking about just ease of use, then to me, the A7S3 definitely tops that with being just like, to be honest, a very something that you're very used to already which is like a point shoot camera like mirrorless cameras are very similar to like the camera on your cell phone it's a sensor you point it at some shit it's gonna record or take a picture well yes in that same 36k pro it's like that but then you also got to make sure that you got like the best exposure and um or if because more, more than likely you're shooting raw so you you know you, you have to learn how to shoot raw better now granted best exposure can be fit for a mirrorless camera i don't know why i said that but you know what i mean like there's just like a lot more things you have to learn to use a 6k pro versus you using a a7s3 um now for every pro that i've gave for a7s3 i've also given you know given a, a pro for the, the six you know the black magic camera but i'm hungry as hell but i'm gonna eat let me talk about the next one Got to spray paint uh, a crate today, trying to get some better product shots. So trying something creative here. Don't know how it's gonna turn out, but if it look good, then it looks good. Now granted the A7S III has like, you know, in, in regards to ease of use, I feel like it takes that category. But if you're somebody who doesn't need the ease of use and you are looking, you're the person who's trying to kit out their camera, then the Black Magic was is definitely the camera that you want as far as how you want to make it kind of look like that big expensive cinema rig. Now granted, you can kind of do that with A7S III, but it's not like Black Magic, I feel like they create things specifically for you to kind of like, you know, rig this camera out even as far as like having ssd holders so you can be able to shoot straight to the ssd which is something that a7s3 can't do so so yes this is easier to use but i feel like the black magic camera once they're rigged out i feel like they're more productive we can, we can say that we can say that all right so moving on to the last point right which is pricing now the a7s3 is roughly, we're gonna just say after taxes and whatnot. Let me tell just yet. We're gonna say after taxes and whatnot, the A7S3 is about 3,800, right? Now, with the Black Magic camera, I think out of tax, they come up to like around 2,800 just for the bodies alone. But the thing is, again, you cannot, now there's, there's really no, no pro for the Black Magic here. You cannot really use a Black Magic camera just at its base level. I mean, you can, bro, but like you're gonna need more batteries. You're gonna need, you know what I'm saying? You're gonna need a, you know, you're gonna need a rig, you're gonna need SSDs and all that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like all that's gonna add up like relatively quickly. Now granted, I know we just talked about how you can sit there and pay. Oh, it's coming out nice. Now granted, we just sat there and talked about how much you'll be paying for SSD versus like a SD card, but you still can get like a 64 gig card, you feel me? And be ready to rock out. Uh, with a Black Magic camera, if you shoot a RAW, you're gonna need like a lot more storage so you can't rock out with no 64 sd car nothing you got to come out the gate swinging with some pretty pretty you know what i'm saying pretty heavy so you're going to factor in that the fact you got to rig this camera out uh you're gonna need like a d-tap battery depending on you know what i'm saying if you're doing all day shoots realistically a black magic camera like for like just a basic rig can come up to like another 1k easy um or have like another 1500 well not even that because you're gonna need a ninja v monitor so you got to add on like an extra thousand for that so well, your Black Magic camera. If you buy a Black Magic camera, you got to factor on like an, another 2K, uh, which brings you to like around, I'm gonna say closer to like that five thousand dollar mark, versus the A7S3, 3800 SD card, bro, 225 dollar lens. But other than that, <laughs> but anyway, other than that, y'all, um, that's it. You know what I'm saying? I uh, hope you all enjoyed the video. Shout out to David Stone for giving me the idea to even do this video. You know what I'm saying? New subscriber, appreciate you again, bro. Um, and we out.
Deuces.